In this video, we look at the economics of global ageing. Population ageing is perhaps the dominant demographic trend of the 21st century. And the ageing process reflects increasing longevity, life expectancies going up, declining fertility, and critically, the progression of huge cohorts of people to older ages, causing a significant change in the age structure of the world's population and that of individual countries. So first of all, a key concept. What do we mean by a country's median age? Well, median age divides the population into two parts of equal size. That is, there are as many people with ages above the median as there are with ages below the median. Which countries have the highest median age? Well, here's the data. The data for 2021 puts uh, Monaco at the top, although it's a principality, really, rather than the country. So if we take significant countries, Japan has the highest median age in 2021. Indeed, its median age, 48.6, is the highest of any major country and more than twice that of the African median age. Another concept in this debate is the age dependency ratio. Now, this ratio is a ratio of dependents. That's people younger than 15 or older than 64 to the working age population, that's people aged between 15 and 64. Which countries have the highest age dependency ratio? Well, here are the, here's the data. And you can see that if we include young and old people, Niger and the Central African Republic have an age dependency ratio of above 100. And significant figures there. Angola 91, Senegal 82, and Japan 71. Of course, with Japan, the essential point, it's an age dependency ratio rather than an, uh, uh, just a general age dependency ratio. And here are some countries with very low age dependency ratios. And UAE and Qatar, countries, of course, with a young population and with a huge influx of young migrant workers have dragged down their age dependency ratio. Singapore at 35, South Korea at 40, but that is rising as we speak. And China at 45. So what is the old age dependency ratio? Because this is a video on the economics of global ageing. Well, that is the ratio of the number of elderly people, defined as those aged 65 and above, as a share of those of working age. Percentage of people aged 65 relative to the, those of working age. And these are the countries with particularly high old age dependency ratios. Japan is streets ahead with a ratio of 51. All of this data is for 2021 and comes from the United Nations. Italy, Greece, Germany and France, quite high. The UK lower, but at 30 as a ratio. In contrast, again, Qatar, Uganda, Ivory Coast. These are countries with an old age dependency ratio of less than 10. India is at 10. China is at 19. Of course, in a previous video, we looked at the differences in the age composition and the population growth rates of India and China. Now, there's another concept which we might bring into the discussion. That is the super-aged society. A super-aged society is one with people aged 65 years and older accounting for more than one-fifth, or 20%, of the total population. And here is examples of countries with a super-aged society. Japan at 30%. Italy, 24%. Finland, Greece and Portugal. Yeah, those uh, sort of club med countries, Spain, Greece and Portugal, have a very, very high level of people aged more than 65 as a percentage of the total population. South Korea is a really good example of a country which is moving towards becoming a super-aged society. Here's the population data for South Korea, breaking it down, those people 14 years and younger, between 15 and 64, and over 65 years old. And you can see that the transition towards a super age society is continuing apace, and is forecast to accelerate as we head towards 2040 and 2050. Indeed, the share of the elderly population in South Korea has continued to grow. The latest data for 2022 is out, and you can see it's nudged up to 17.5%. It was only 11% in 2010. Now, part of the issue of global ageing is the, the low level of female fertility. 
So which countries have the lowest female fertility? Well, the answer in 2021 was Taiwan, 1.07. South Korea, 1.09. Singapore, 1.15. Remember that the replacement fertility level is 2.1. So all of these countries, including Greece, Japan, Hong Kong, Portugal, all of them have female fertility rates well below the replacement fertility level required for the natural population to replace itself. I'll post links to these videos. There is an excellent short video on South Korea. Uh, on the Geographic channel, which I'll post a link to in the comments section. So why might an ageing population have consequences for economic growth? Again, I'll post this video, a 12-minute uh, discussion about the true cost of ageing, published by The Economist in 2021. I'll post a link in the comments section of the video. So why might an ageing population have negative downside consequences for long-run growth? Well, crucially, I suppose, the key point is that an ageing population can put huge and growing pressure on pensions, healthcare and social services. First of all, a rise in the age dependency ratio increases the burden of those people in work paying for the welfare faced by uh, those people who are now dependents. So those people who are of working age in work are paying their taxes and having to pay more in tax to cover the welfare and uh, the social services and the other costs associated with an ageing population. We often see, for example, an increase in spending on age-related fiscal costs, healthcare, welfare support, including the state pension and social care. And an ageing population might, repeat, might cause a possible rise in shortages of labour. And if labour becomes scarcer, that will drive wages up and conceivably increase unit labour costs, leading to a country suffering a loss of price competitiveness. An ageing population might, again might, cause a possible slowdown in labour productivity growth. Although that's not true for all jobs as people get older. And it can also cause an increase in savings. Typically people who are older tend to save more. And the higher savings ratios of older people tends to reduce aggregate demand. And the diversion of savings into meeting increasing and growing pension liabilities might crowd out uh, money flowing into productive capital investment. On the other hand, an ageing population can have positive consequences for growth. First of all, it increases demand for certain products. It increases demand for housing and critically, of course, it increases demand for specialist health care. So lots of health businesses are now riding on the back of the so-called greying of the population. People have more money to spend on leisure and travel and other spending associated with with older age people. And critically, part of the reason why the population is ageing is because healthy life expectancy may, have, may well have increased. And that's a good thing, because it means that people can work productively to an older age, and many do. Older workers often bring greater experience and know-how to their jobs. So we cannot assume that labour productivity will suffer simply as a, as a population gets older. And there's the wider social benefit, the social aspect, not often picked up by the GDP data, as older people, in greater numbers, engage in productive activities like volunteer work and caregiving, often hoping to relieve the pressure on organisations in the UK, such as the National Health Service. Well, given that we are experiencing global ageing, given that there are some significant risks associated with a rising median age, what policy strategies, what interventions might a government introduce to offset some of the effects of an ageing or declining population? Well, different countries have tried different things. Generally, one of the aims is to increase the labour market participation rate of older workers, particularly people who might have otherwise retired. So you might try, you might try to aim to make it easier for people over the age of 65 to carry on working, for example, by changing the rules that cap pension wealth or by encouraging businesses to offer part-time flexible work patterns for older people. Some countries, including the UK, have raised the state retirement age since life expectancy is rising. So people are expected to work longer to a greater age before they can claim the basic state pension. Policy to tackle gender discrimination at work might encourage more younger women to take a break to raise a family and raise the fertility rate. On the pension side, 
some governments have introduced auto-enrolment into occupational pensions. Now, auto-enrolment means that the default choice is for a worker and their employer to participate in the pension scheme. And the aim is to raise private sector pension wealth so that the burden of pension liabilities falls less heavily on the government. An ageing population might lead to shortages of labour, in which case there could be a greater incentive for businesses across different industries to invest in robotics, to automate, to increase the capital intensity of production, to use less labour and to raise productivity. Of course, the biggest potential response to a declining and an ageing population in countries is to adopt a more relaxed approach to immigration. Relaxing immigration controls, increasing a migration quota, for example, might encourage an influx of younger people to increase the labour force and also to raise female, female fertility. Although the evidence is that many migrants come to work in a country for a short period of time rather than stay long term to raise a family. But other governments are now starting to think more imaginatively about uh, bigger incentives for people to start families, including more generous maternity, maternity leave and significant child trust payments. Keep an eye on the countries you're interested in to see which particular policies they're introducing to address the issues of declining and ageing populations. So there we go, a quick look at some of the economics of global ageing. Take care, stay happy, stay positive. See you sometime soon.